Hey, what's up, fellas? You know something's hot when it almost catches you on fire just being too close to it. Look at my hand and that thermal gun about to burst into flames. So the purpose of this video today is for my waste oil burner book. And this is going to help out people who are trying to squeeze out that last little bit of temperature out of their foundry. If you're trying to melt something in the burner just quite isn't hot enough, this video is going to go through the details of how you get a burner to its maximum temperature and we're going to take a look at some graphs that i drew corresponding to the data that we recovered from this test today so definitely um kind of eye-opening to realize that sometimes less fuel is better than more when it comes to getting something really hot it's more about the velocity of the air pressure that's important so this right here is the rocket burner it has two oxygen lances added onto it, which you can see here running in oxygen lance mode. But today we're not interested in oxygen injection. The max temp with oxygen injection is well over 3000 degrees, probably up in the 4000 degree range because we completely melted a crucible one day. And today we just want to see what it can do on air and diesel fuel. All right, guys, one of the best ways to interpret data is to get it laid out on a graph like this. So. Let's take a look at what happened in this test. We can see here, this green line represents how much fuel we were burning. In the beginning of this test, I had this thing cranked all the way up to about 180 kilowatts of power. And within six to seven minutes, we got up to 2,287 degrees Fahrenheit. And as time went on, we kind of reached a plateau here. I lowered the temp a little bit because I could just tell it wasn't in the hot spot. I lowered it down to 150 kilowatts of power. But we kind of stagnated in temperature here at 2,540 degrees for a very long duration of time. You can see here I shut the furnace down for a moment to dump a crucible out and to add a new charge in. And when we fired it back up, we still kind of just hovered at that 2,540 degrees. So I decided to turn down the fuel at this point right here. And when I did that, the temperature started to go up from, it only rose six degrees in this little bit of time, but at that last little bit, we got it up to about another 200 degrees, I think it was, six, 2,668 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's take a look at what this graph looks like in real life. Essentially what it comes down to here is we figure out that when you have a very small flame sticking out of the top of the foundry, you're going to be hotter. Like this right here is not the way to go. This is the 180 kilowatts and it's only getting us up to 2,400 some degrees. See how the flame up at the top is smaller than the one on the bottom? It's the same air input, but look at how hot we're able to get. That was maxing out at 2,668 degrees. All right, guys, so it's always been my experience that you need a minimum of 20 minutes to get a crucible to full temperature. I've done a lot of e-waste anode sludge smelting and e-waste smelting, and I have found that um, anything under 20 minutes, the bottom of your crucible is not to full temperature yet. So just keep that in mind. 20 minutes is a good time to get up to 2,500 degrees inside the crucible now in this particular case it took us 48 minutes to get to 2668 but that didn't have to happen we were jacking around had we adjusted the fuel here to this point like this we would have been able to get up to this 2668 degrees fahrenheit in 19 to 20 minutes so I'm gonna corroborate that in another test sometime next week, but I just wanna get this data for the waste oil burner book. This right here is kinda of like the master for the book that I'm writing. This stuff's gonna actually go into the book. So I'm using some real empirical data to compile and populate the book. And um, essentially what we learned here today is that um, a good half hour is sometimes needed to get things fully up to temperature when you're trying to get to that high temp melt. 
If you're doing copper or aluminum or something like that, forget about it. You can do it in two minutes with this thing. But for the high temp stuff, you can see how it just really slowly lags up over time. And this is an uninsulated furnace as well. So we got to remember that. Not all furnaces would behave this way. I'm losing heat big time. The exterior of my furnace is on the order of 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So class is dismissed.